In this video, we're going to look to kind of sync up a couple of ideas that we've spoken about recently. We're going to be bringing the 30, 60, 90 ratio and the 45, 45, 90 ratio together with some of the work that we've been doing on the unit circle to get to the point where we can evaluate some tougher trigonometric values without necessarily going straight to the calculator to do it. Now, in order to be able to do that, you need to know these ratios. So if you have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, the ratio between sides is going to be 1 to 2 to square root of 3. The largest of those three is the hypotenuse, and that's going to measure two units. And then for a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, the ratio between sides is going to be 1 to 1, since it's an isosceles triangle due to two angles being the same, to square root of 2. And then this is the hypotenuse of that set of values. So we'll go ahead and show how this idea is going to be utilized with some of the unit circle stuff that we've been doing more recently. And we'll go ahead and try to work through these couple examples. Then we'll try to do a few that are a little bit tougher on the next screen. And hopefully we'll have a pretty solid feel for how to do this once this video comes to a close. So we want to use unit circle to determine cosine of 30 degrees. So start by locating that 30 degree angle. So you do have to locate this angle fairly accurately. It doesn't have to be perfect. What I mean by fairly accurately is this. Halfway through the first quadrant would be 45 degrees. I need to be pretty sure that I plot an angle that's not quite halfway through the first quadrant. So I'm not working halfway through the first quadrant. I'm working slightly less than halfway through to show that 30 degree angle. I plot my point there. And hopefully what I realize is since I'm looking for cosine, I need to know what the X coordinate of this point that we just highlighted actually is. Now, the issue here is that we are not looking at a nice location on the unit circle. By nice location, I mean on the x-axis or on the y-axis at one of these four points. If you're at one of those four points, you know that your x and your y are either a 0, a 1, or a negative 1. There's no mystery to it. When we're at a location like we just plotted a few seconds ago, we're going to have to do a little bit more legwork in order to figure out what the x and the y coordinates are. And that's where those ratios that we reviewed at the beginning of this video come into play. So what I did here is I basically drew myself a triangle, right? I plot my, my 30 degree angle. Uh, I dropped down from that point to the x axis. And what I had right here is I had a right triangle. I drew that triangle a little bit bigger outside of the unit circle. What I realized is this angle right here was, was a 30 degree angle. Because there's a 30 degree angle sitting there, and I know there's a 90 degree angle here from where I came down to hit the positive stretch of the x-axis, I know that this has to be a 60 degree angle up here. So this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle that we just drew into the unit circle. What is special about this triangle, though, is, is that it's drawn into the unit circle, right? So the hypotenuse of this triangle is actually the side that we know. This distance connecting the origin to that edge of the circle has to be one unit. So I actually drew that on this, this triangle down below my unit circle. So this is one unit for the hypotenuse. Think about that ratio. So the ratio that we reviewed a few seconds ago is across this top line here. One to two to square root of three. I need to take this ratio and I need to turn the largest value from it, the hypotenuse from it, into a one since I want to know the lengths of these sides of the triangle. And if you don't know why we want to know those yet, you will in about 10 seconds. So if I think about the hypotenuse from this sequence of ratios, it's two. How do I turn a two into a one? By keeping the ratio equivalent, just divide everything by two. So I divide everything within that original ratio by two and I get one half, I get one, and I get square root of three over two. So the bigger side, which is across the bottom here, right across the bottom, the bigger of the two legs is going to be the bigger of the two values for the fractions that you see on the edges, one half or square root of three over two. In this case, square root of three over two is the larger value. And then the lesser value is going to be one half. So if this edge on that triangle measures square root of three over two, and this edge on that triangle measures one half, I need to recognize that I'm looking for cosine, so I need the x-coordinate from this point right here. Well, isn't the x-coordinate from that point simply going to be whatever this bottom leg on that triangle actually is? And we just established that bottom leg to be square root of 3 over 2. 
uh, it is a positive x value, so I didn't have to change the SIGN of my answer. I just end up with square root of 3 over 2 for cosine of 30 degrees. Move on to sine of 45 degrees. So step one, once again, locate the angle. Now 45 degrees is halfway through the first quadrant, exactly halfway through the first quadrant, right? If I'm going completely through the first quadrant, I get to 90, 45 is exactly half of 90 degrees. So I'm going halfway through the first quadrant. If I think about this triangle that I have drawn right here, this is a 45 degree angle right here. This is a 90 degree angle that you see right here. And then this is another 45 degree angle here. So I broke out my 45, 45, 90 ratio, uh, which was one to two, excuse me, one to one to square root of two. I need to do something similar. The hypotenuse of this triangle, since it is really represented by a radius of the unit circle, is really a one. So of these three values, one, one, square root of two, which of them represents the hypotenuse of the base 45, 45, 90 triangle? And you hopefully realize square root of two is bigger than one is. So how do I turn square root of two into a one? since we want the hypotenuse for the specific triangle that we're looking at within our unit circle to measure one unit, well, I divide by square root of two. So that means that across the bottom here, this length is going to be one divided by square root of two, as is this length up into the first quadrant. Uh, sine of 45 degrees is going to be the y coordinate of this point. The x and the y coordinate are actually the same right there, since it's an isosceles triangle that we ended up drawing. Uh, the y coordinate is 1 over the square root of 2. Now, pay attention to what your teacher or your professor is asking of you. A, a lot of the time, you're not going to want to give an answer that has a root in the denominator. So what we would then need to do, and you see I've done this in red here, we would need to do a little bit of simplification. So this is rationalizing the original answer. So what do I multiply the square root of 2 by to turn it into something that's no longer going to involve a root? Well, if I multiply by the square root of 2, I end up with the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Well, I can't get away with just multiplying the denominator by that. I have to multiply by some form of the number 1. So if I multiply by 1 in the form of square root of 2 over square root of 2, top times top gives me square root of 2. Bottom times bottom gives us that square root of 4 that we just talked about. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. This would likely be the, the most familiar way to see the answer that I've written up at the top of the screen. If you were to be looking in a solutions manual or if it was a multiple choice SAT question or something along those lines. So we'll do a few on this screen that involve the same idea, uh, a little bit tougher. Um, so these angles are not first quadrant angles, and that's what makes them a little bit tougher. It's largely the same process. There's just a little bit of an adjustment that needs to be made uh, in addition to what we just did on the previous screen. So we want to use the unit circle to determine, and circle is spelled wrong here, ignore that. I have a highlighter, so I can't cross it out. Uh, but we want to use the unit circle to determine these trigonometric values. So we're going to start with cosine of 150. So I need to start by locating the angle. So 150. Uh, well, I know not, I know 150 is between 90 and 180. If I if I go 60 beyond 90, I'm at 150. If I stop 30 shy of 180, I'm at 150. So you have to be able to use some sort of logic like that in order to be able to locate that angle. What I've done now is I've I've done something similar to what we did in our first couple examples within this video, but I'm not going to the positive stretch of the x-axis. If I was going to the positive stretch of the x-axis and looking at this angle, that's actually the angle that we plotted. I need to find a way to involve a 30-60-90 triangle or a 45-45-90 triangle if I'm going to be using the strategy that we just did on the prior screen within these new problems. So if I drop straight down to the negative stretch of the x-axis, I end up with a triangle that looks like this. I enlarge that triangle. I know that the hypotenuse of that triangle, since it sits in the unit circle, is 1, once again, corresponds to the radius of the unit circle. Uh, I know that this acute angle that sits right here, the angle that's plotted in standard position, the terminating side of it, and the negative x-axis form a 30-degree angle. How do you know that? Well, if you stop at 150, you've got 30 more degrees to go to get down to the x-axis here and complete your 180-degree trip. So you have to find some way to identify an angle within that triangle that you establish. Uh, what's significant about this triangle? Well, once again, it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Here's my standard 30, 60, 90 ratio, 1 to 2 to square root of 3. 
I need to turn the hypotenuse into a one. Hypotenuse from this ratio is a two. If I divide everything by two, I've found the side lengths for the triangle that we see within our unit circle just above on the screen right now. So the smallest side, which is the vertical side, is gonna measure one half unit. Uh, the bottom side, the longer leg, is gonna measure square root of three over two units. So what is my answer for cosine of 150 gonna be? Well, think about whether or not you're gonna look at this measure, vertical edge, or this measure, horizontal edge, in order to establish the x coordinate of this point. Cosine corresponds to the x coordinate of the point. Well, x coordinate of the point is going to correspond to the horizontal measure. The biggest mistake I would see made with a situation like this is not having the negative in front of that fraction for the answer. I would see a lot of people do all of this work perfectly and then write the answer as positive square root of 3 over 2. Hopefully, it's obvious why the answer is negative. Although this length on this triangle measures square root of 3 over 2, I'm really in the x-axis, excuse me, I'm really in the coordinate plane when I'm thinking about this triangle being within the unit circle. In my x-coordinate, since I'm definitely moving to the left, my x-coordinate is clearly negative. So really the only change that happens whenever you're dealing with a non-first quadrant angle is you might have to change the S-I-G-N, positive negative, of the, the result that you give. We'll try to finish this up, try to speed it up through these last couple of examples. Uh, locate the angle 315. So let's see, 90, 180, 270. That would take me to 360. 315 is going to be between 270 and, and 360. I think it's, isn't this 45 degrees short of 360? Right? If I do 360 minus 45, I get 315. So that tells me I need to go halfway through my fourth quadrant in order to plot that angle in standard position. So if I draw myself a triangle, I'm, I'm going to work my way up to the positive stretch of the x-axis. I get this triangle. If I enlarge that triangle, it should be pretty obvious based on the argument we just made that that's a 45 degree angle that sits right there. We stopped 45 degrees shy of 360 in order to plot that angle in standard position. So I, I'm dealing with a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. I break out my 45, 45, 90 ratio, one to one to square root of two. But then once again, this triangle is drawn in the unit circle. When you draw a triangle in the unit circle, the hypotenuse is always going to be one because the hypotenuse is always going to correspond to the radius of the circle. So biggest value from the base ratio is square root of two. If I divide all components by square root of two, I end up with the values for this edge. Ooh, that was not a good job at highlighting it. I end up with the values for this edge and for this edge of that triangle. I'm looking for sine of the angle. Sine would be the y-coordinate of this point, right? We always use the y-coordinate to establish an answer for sine of an angle that's plotted. So the y-coordinate is negative, right? So don't make the mistake that I said I would be worried about with that first one. Y-coordinate's negative. Uh, so I'm going to have a negative answer. And the measure right here would be, well, these values are the same. doesn't matter which one you look at, the first one or the second one. It's going to be 1 over the square root of 2. If you're professor, your teacher's okay with you giving an answer that has a root in the bottom. You can leave it like this. You might have to do that rationalization bit that we went through in, the, in one of the previous examples within this video if your teacher or your professor requires it. Then the toughest one here, the one that we will wrap up with, is for tangent of negative 120. So we're dealing with something that is not sine or cosine. We are dealing with something that is a negative angle. We're also dealing with something that is not located on the x-axis or the y-axis when we plot the angle. So we have kind of all of the pieces that can make a unit circle evaluation a little bit tougher happening simultaneously within this problem. But just kind of break it down little by little, locate the angle first, negative 120 degrees. So for a negative angle, we're going counterclockwise around the circle in order to plot it. So when I go for negative 120 degrees, I know if I'm going to negative 90, I'm ending here. If I'm going negative 180, I'm ending here. Well, 120 is 30 degrees beyond 90, so I don't want to go quite halfway through the third quadrant if I'm working in that counterclockwise direction around the circle. So you have to locate that angle, like I've said a few times, fairly accurately uh, in terms of being halfway through, less than halfway through, or more than halfway through a given quadrant. I'm going to come up to the positive x, excuse me, up to the negative x-axis in order to establish a right triangle this time around. 
Once again, the hypotenuse of that right triangle is one unit. Now, this angle right here, we went 30 degrees beyond negative 90 to get to negative 120 total. So what sits here? Because that's actually the angle that's within the triangle that we've drawn right here. Well, if we've gone 30 past 90, we've got to go 60 more to get back to the negative stretch of the x-axis. So if you're wondering why I have a 60 degrees represented there, that would be the reason for it. Once again, we can break out the 30, 60, 90 ratios. So that would be 1 to 2 to square root of 3. I need to turn the hypotenuse into a 1. That's going to involve dividing everything by 2. So the smaller edge on this triangle, which in this case is the horizontal edge, right? If this is a 60 degree angle, I'm going to have a smaller leg here than I'm going to have vertically working down toward that 30 degree angle that sits at the bottom of this particular version of one of these triangles. So I've got one half as my measure of this side of that triangle, and then I've got square root of three over two as my measure for this side. Now, I, I didn't necessarily show this, I probably should have. Tangent is equal to sine divided by cosine. So what I've done is I've taken the y coordinate, the answer for sine of the angle that's plotted. The y coordinate is going to correspond to the vertical edge, so square root of three over two. Hopefully you realize why I made it negative. Think about where you are within the unit circle. That y coordinate is definitely negative. I'm then going to divide by cosine of the same angle. So cosine would correspond to the x-coordinate. Well, the x-coordinate is going to be the measure of this side, right? My horizontal portion of that triangle that we've been working with for the past minute or two. It's going to measure one half unit. But once again, I made it negative because my x-coordinate is negative when I'm looking at that point that's plotted in the third quadrant. So negative divided by a negative makes positive. So I've, I've dropped the negatives throughout the, the next step here. Uh, and then I also did some simplifying here. You would never see the answer for tangent of negative 120 degrees represented like this crazy looking fraction right here. So rather than dividing that square root of three over two fraction by one half, I multiplied by the reciprocal. Whenever you multiply fractions, if you have shared factors between the top and bottom, you can actually have them multiply out to a one. Uh, so I end up with square root of three over one or just plain old square root of three for the tangent of negative 120. So hopefully this video has allowed you to see how the, that unit circle page that you maybe had given to you by a trig teacher and maybe used as a reference, reference page throughout that trig course, hopefully this has given you a little bit of a feel for how using the 30, 60, 90 ratios and the 45, 5, 45, 90 ratio, how those can kind of take the place of having to memorize that or always refer to that. And I'm guessing a lot of college professors, a lot of AP calculus teachers are going to require just that.